All right, welcome everyone to our introduction to Tornello webinar. Um, we are going to spend about 45 minutes introducing you to the basics, giving you a quick overview and instructions and the main features and benefits of Tornello, uh, in particular for organizers of chess tournaments and arbiters. We'll kick off with uh, I guess just a little bit of history and background to Tornello so that you are aware where we came from. So one of the first questions people will often ask me is, well, why, why did you call it Tornello? The, the word Tornello actually tells a bit of a story. So Tornello um, comes from the two words, tournament and ELO. So ELO, of course, being uh, the rating system or the rating methodology that's used by, uh, by FIDE. And back in, uh, well, between 1995 and 2008, I was running a number of chess tournaments for kids in a scholastic uh, school chess coaching business in Melbourne, Australia. We, in the end, were running something close to 300 tournaments every single year. So that was almost a tournament each day uh, that, that we were running. You know, it was almost one every single, uh, every single day right through the course of the year. And I needed a system that would, um, that would help us to manage that volume of events to make sure that we weren't spending a lot of time organising each and every single event with, uh, with, with registrations, with processing registrations, with managing the event on the day and then, and then producing uh, results for all of our players. Uh, I was also a little bit frustrated by our um, national federation that didn't offer a rating system for scholastic players or for rapid games of chess. So all of our games were faster than 30 minutes for, for a game. And even if there was a um, even if there was the opportunity to, um, to submit them to ratings, that ratings list was only published every four months. Now that's sped up over time and it's every three months now. And in the World Chess Federation, the FIDE list comes out every month. But still, in my view, the, the idea of waiting for a whole month or even for three months for a rating after a tournament was just, uh, was just too big a percentage of those kids' lives. So I started off by building the, the, the rating system just in uh, Excel and Access and, and just run it, running it manually. Uh, and in, from 2008 through to 2012, uh, built a web-based uh, tournament management system. And so that's, uh, that's what became, became uh, Tornello. Um, it was uh, a web-based, entirely online, entirely web-based system to manage the three stages or the three, the three parts of a life cycle of a chess tournament. So we would collect the registrations directly into the pairings program. We would use the pairings program to manage and organize the tournament. And then we would click a button at the end and all the results and ratings would be uh, updated. There'd be a live ratings list. So we were managing those three processes uh, of, of a chess tournament. Uh, and we we used it for our own events, and a number of uh, you know, a number of our kind of close friends were were using it as well. So from 2008 through 2012, we managed about uh, 12,000 tournaments uh, on Tornello, uh, all of them over the board tournaments, uh, face to face events. At the start of COVID in 2020, um, we realised that uh, chess was never going to be the same again. And we couldn't run any of our face-to-face -face tournaments anymore. So uh, what we had to do was, like everybody else in the world, find some way that all of our players in, in our tournaments could play games of chess online. And when I went and looked at the existing platforms and how those platforms worked, um, they gave us an experience for the players, which was uh, what would I now call an on-demand experience. So there are some fantastic platforms uh, out there that you can go and you can play a game of chess anytime that you like, day or night, 24 hours a day. And there's always you know, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 people online that you can play against. Um, that online experience of on-demand chess where you can just go and have a game of chess anytime that you like, wasn't the experience that I was looking to try and create for my players. I was looking for something that was much more like an over the board event, what we now call a scheduled tournament. Right? And the idea of a scheduled tournament is that there is uh, you know, a structure, the arbiter is in control, the arbiter is managing the event and is, can, be, can be in full control of, of how 
and when the event the event runs. Um, a, a scheduled event uh, creates more value for the players. It allows us to charge registration or entry fees to the tournament uh, to provide prizes, and the structure of the tournament is all there. And of course, it's very very different to walk out into a park and play a game of chess against a stranger. Uh, you know that on-demand experience from you know going to you know uh, a venue and playing in a state championships or a national championships or a world championship event. So the context to those events, the fact that they are scheduled events and that they're kind of official tournaments and they're rated or they they have some prizes and some meaning uh, makes a big difference. So um, we decided to add an online game server to Tornello so that we could um, that we could manage. Um, the, the experience that we were looking to try and create for our players. Uh, and we've ended up as really the only platform in the world that is purpose-built for tournament organizers and chess arbiters, right? And so our platform is not focused on trying to get as many members and individual players on our site as possible. Uh, you know, we're there to facilitate a tournament organizer or an arbiter running a really, really good event, an event which is a great experience for your players that has more value for your players than an on-demand game of chess, right? So our goal is to make it easy for you to do. Uh, like I said, you know, if we're running 300 chess tournaments a year, one, one, one tournament every single day, we need to make sure that those uh, processes are seamless. So uh, we kicked that online game server off in, in the start of 2020, in February, March, April, 2020. Uh, in August and September of 2020, uh, we ended up doing some uh, hosting uh, European Chess Union's um, European Youth Championships online as a hybrid style tournament. Um, that was a 750 player event. Uh, it ran really smoothly and the rest of the world uh, started to take notice of the opportunities of running scheduled events uh, using Tornello uh, instead of trying to, uh, I guess, force uh, an on-demand platform it to run to run a, a, a what was essentially a scheduled event. Um, we've now got over 7,500 organizations uh, from 126 different countries uh, using Tornello. And those organizations are you know, FIDE, the International Chess Federation, the Continental Chess Associations like the European Chess Union, FIDE Americas, uh, the African Chess Confederation. We've got national federations, uh, you know, all around the world that are, that are using Tornello. We've got uh, regional associations and, and leagues. We've got local clubs, schools, individual coaches uh, and, uh, and chess businesses uh, and even individual tournament directors or organisers. Uh, so uh, across the spectrum, anybody who's running uh, a, a scheduled event, an official event, if you're looking to collect registration fees for your tournament, if the players are willing to pay a fee to play in your tournament, uh, you probably want that tournament to be hosted uh, by Tornello because it will give you as the organiser and the administrator and the, the arbiters of that tournament uh, the tools you need to run that and it will provide that, uh, that experience for the players that they're looking for uh, as, a, as, a, as a scheduled event. Um, the, the events that we've hosted uh, on Tornello in the last couple of years include a number of uh, world championships. We're just in the middle of, or, or at the final stage of the uh, FIDE World Youth and Cadets, uh, we call the World Youth Cup. Uh, we've had the FIDE Online Olympiad for players with a disability last year and coming up this year. A number of European uh, championships uh, qualifiers for the, uh, the, the um, World Cup. Uh, in four different continents, uh, the Asian Zonal, uh, you know, Scholastic Championships, you know, World Universities Championships, and, and you know, literally thousands and thousands of other, other events. Uh, Tornello is scalable, uh, reliable, and easy to use. So we can host tournaments uh, of up to 1,024 concurrent players per section uh, with multiple sections or divisions uh, in the tournament. And Tornello provides everything all in one platform. So everything that you need to do to run the, the event, the full life cycle, uh, you're always in one website, one page, uh, everything's just in the one place. So registrations, tournament management, online games, and then 
uh, results, uh, you know, any sort of downloads or, or, or exports that you need to do as well. What I'm going to do is kind of walk you through the, um, the, the, the aspects of Tornello from three different perspectives. Um, so there are three different user types that we have on Tornello. Uh, we have players who come in and play the tournaments. We have tournament arbiters who, or, or who sort of running the tournaments on the day of the event. And then we've got organizations or organization owners who are, uh, who are involved with, uh, with creating uh, the events. So what, what I'll do is just step through, um, I'm gonna share my screen now. Um, and I will step through the, the, the process of, uh, of running, uh, or I guess creating events through to, to running tournaments. So this is the Tornello homepage. Uh, you'll see when you first come to the homepage, a few useful menus across the top. Um, our start here page is a wealth of, uh, of information and resources for tournament organizers and arbiters. We have player manuals, we have uh, arbiter manuals, we've got videos, we've got uh, lots of templates as well. So if you're looking to uh, set some tournament regulations or you need some fair play regulations, you don't have to write them yourself you can come to the start here section and you've got a whole heap of, uh, you know, different regulations, you know, uh, right from the start of the event through to even, you know, slides for your closing ceremony. So uh, that's, that's a, a really useful resource. Obviously you're here tonight because uh, you, you've seen the webinars that we're running uh, and we run on a regular basis uh, webinars about all sorts of different, um, different, different topics. So some webinars coming up will be Toronto for National Federations and how we help federations to, uh, to, to manage um, their tournaments uh, at a, on a, across, across a whole country. Um, we've got fair play webinars, arbiter certifications, FIDE events, lots of different, lots of different sort of webinars that um, you know, you're welcome to come back and join in uh, anytime that you like. Our blog gives you articles about, uh, about um, different events, about fair play, about case studies, about how, how other people have been running tournaments, and we provide all our release notes as well. So Tornello is, uh, is still, I guess, kind of a, a new platform. We are in, uh, in rapid development phase still, and so we've got uh, new features coming out almost every single week, uh, and you'll be able to find out what those new features are on our, on our blog. Uh, we've got some information about the services we offer, and then our certification program for arbiters, which is completely optional. Anybody can run a tournament on Tornello. You certainly don't need to, um, to be a certified arbiter, but if that's something that you're interested in, we have those certifications also in place. So the, um, the first uh, user type that comes to Tornello is what we call our organization owner or organizations. And every single tournament on Tornello is owned by an organization. The organization is the logo that the tournament belongs to. So you can see here we've got uh, you know, Kids Unlimited as a, as a coaching enterprise you know, in India. We've got US Chess as a, as a national federation. We've got uh, Young Sparks as a business. We've got a school. We've got a continental uh, or a or, you know, federation or a, or a national federation. So all of those different uh, organizations, those different logos, is the person who owns the tournament. And every single tournament is, has to be owned by somebody. You can think of it about like where, whose logo would be on the tournament if you were advertising the tournament, or if you're collecting registration fees, which bank account would that money go into? Right? And that would be the organization. Uh, we've got a lot of organizations uh, using Tornello. As I said, there's over 7,500 now. Um, a lot of people use Tornello uh, just uh, you know, out of the box. Um, if you want some of the more advanced features, uh, organizations need uh, to go through a verification process. Uh, and that verification process is quick and simple, just to prove that you are a genuine organization that's running genuine events. And by, um, by going through that verification process, you'll have access to uh, additional features and functionality um, so if you start using Tornello and you're looking for some extra features, it's free to, read, to verify yourself. Uh, it just means that we won't have 
uh, spammers or inappropriate uh, inappropriate language or bad actors uh, who are participating in the NOAA community. So the first step would be to create a new organization. Uh, we'll give the organization a name, uh, a, a, a URL or uh, you know, a, a link. So it's on, you get a, a website with your, um, you can still see, uh, a link with to your organization. So you've got a, a kind of a homepage for, for your organization. Uh, and you can also upload a logo um, or a uh, or, or, or some colors so you get a little bit of branding. So for example, uh, I'll just pop this one onto the page. Uh, this is uh, Kids Unlimited, which is a coaching organization in Australia. And we've got uh, not just the logo for the, for the company, but also a little bit of branding with the, with the colors uh, and uh, some contact details, you know, information about the organization. The idea with Tornello is that we are in partnership with organizations. Um, we're, we're not out there to try and collect members for ourselves. Uh, we are trying to work with organizations. And so give you as an organization a brand presence, uh, make sure that you have your contact details there so that it's easy for people to find you uh, and to, to join your organization and take part in your events. Uh, then it shows all of the different events that are coming up, the recent results uh, that, are, that are all um, you know, uh, part of that organization. So all of those events are owned by, uh, by, by this, by this um, entity. Uh, of course, when you're running a lot of different events and Kids Unlimited has been running events on, on Tornello for 25 years uh, with nearly 9,000 tournaments, uh, we need to be able to delegate responsibility to other people in an event. So you've got different roles on an organization and those roles will allow you to distribute your workload amongst a number of different, different people. So you can have administrators or organizers who are running events for you uh, on your organization. And you can create the organization, set that up and, and have that um, uh, ready, ready to go. So that's your, your organization, uh, get some branding in there, get all your events set up and, um, and, and then promote that page to your community and start building your community of people playing in tournaments. Once you've got a tournament set up, uh, then we will uh, we'll need an arbiter to, to take part in actually uh, creating those events. So let's uh, have a look at how you create an event. So click add a new event. And then we've got here a number of different settings that you can create for the event. Um, and I'll just go through and show you some of the, the, the basic settings. So to start off with, you just need the name of your event. Okay, so we've got, we need, uh, we need a time zone and all events, even if they're played online, need to select a time zone uh, because that's the time that is advertised to your, uh, to, to people, in, on, on the website so that they know uh, when that's going to happen. So if it's being played as an over the board tournament, of course you need a physical location, you can put an address in there. Uh, if you're playing it just as a, um, uh, just as, as an online tournament, you could have a fairly general location, we just call it Australia, and it's going to display everything in Aust an Australian time zone. If we wanted to be more specific, you could say it's Melbourne, and then we'll be able to display these time zones in Melbourne time zone. So we'll create uh, the, the basics of the tournament and, and off we go from there. Okay, uh, various different settings that you can that you can have on a tournament. Uh, you can have different format. So uh, we've got online or offline games. We've got the ability to create team battles or individual tournaments. Uh, and then you've got some structural aspects to your event where you can have different divisions in the tournament. So you might have an, uh, you know, an, an age group tournament. You need an under eights and under tens, a 12s, 14s, 16s. All of your different divisions can be, uh, so you know, here we go, this is a 10 tournament. A second division can be under 12s and so on and so forth. So you can have multiple divisions uh, in, in, a, in, in a single tournament. Uh, you've got lots of customizable uh, settings on your game rules. So in the game rules, there's uh, you know, lots of different things that you can do from 
chest variants or different starting positions, uh, you know, like chest 960 or uh, in a coaching scenario, uh, through to uh, customizing the interactions with the arbiter, uh, customizing the number of moves that you have to make before a, a draw offer is allowed to be made, like Sophia rules for tournaments, uh, customizing your repetitions and, uh, and um, move limits. So you can play according to kind of the online rules where it's an automatic declaration of a draw after three times uh, repetition, or whether you wanted to play over the board rules where you've got a five fold repetition and then you are uh, forcing the players to make a claim uh, and call the arbiter and make a claim after a three fold repetition. So we've got some customization on the actual game rules. Uh, your chess clocks are very flexible. Uh, so you can have uh, time for your game. Uh, you can have an increment. So we've got five minutes plus five seconds of move. Um, and you can also have multiple periods. So we could say, okay, that's five minutes plus five seconds of move for the first 40 moves. And then after 40 moves, we're going to add an extra 60 seconds and keep our increment at five seconds per move. Right? So you can use these multiple time periods in a, on your clocks uh, to, to set uh, you know, typical feed a time controls with uh, with multiple with multiple time periods on your game. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got some clock rules. Uh, one of the really nice features of Tornello is that uh, we're able to cater to the needs uh, of uh, of both individual players as well as events when it comes to tournament privacy or player um, private information privacy. So more and more, what we'll see. Um, is that uh, the countries uh, and uh, you know, local local associations and individual players uh, recognise the the rights of privacy uh, for players um, in in their federation? So, of course, the GDPR in Europe is one of the most um, uh, you know well known uh, privacy regulations. But every single country has got their own privacy regulations that require tournament organizers and, and rating system owners um, to, uh, to give certain rights uh, and, and to hold certain responsibilities over, um, over, over the player's private information. So that is their name, their uh, you know, date of birth, the uh, school that they attend, um, you know, uh, email address and contact details, obviously, uh, any, other, any other private information. So, Tornello allows you to um, manage the privacy for your event uh, and allow your tournament to be searchable by Google, that's a public event, or to be hidden from search, uh, from any Google searches, but available within the Tornello community. Uh, so that's only searchable within Tornello. If you're signed into the site, you're a member of the Tornello community, or you can make it completely private where nobody can search for your tournament and you need to actually share uh, you know, a secret link with people so that they can find your tournament. Uh, we've also got into privacy for individual players. So individual players can elect to have their name uh, private and, and not, not found by Google. And so Tornello manages all of this for you automatically. Um, the players can manage their own privacy and you know that you can have your tournament, uh, you know, with results and everything published live online. And if there are one or two or three players, it's usually a very small number, who need their information to be, be kept private, their names will not be displayed um, on any public website. They won't be available to Google. They'll only be available for other players within the tournament or for you as the arbiter to see. So we manage all of that privacy. Um, sometimes a, a, a national championships or a world championship event will need uh, what we call an exposed event where there's some terms and conditions for registration for the tournament. And you as a tournament organizer will let the players know that, um, that you're going to override their privacy re requests. So a player who has requested their name be kept private, you might decide in a, uh, in a national championships, it's in the public interest, it's newsworthy. And so you're going, to, um, you're going to create terms and conditions of the tournament that says, well, we know that normally you want your name to be hidden, but during this event, it's going to be an exposed tournament. And while that event is in progress, uh, it is news and, and your name will be exposed for the whole world to see. Um, after the event is finished, 
that exposed uh, setting is automatically reverted and the player will have their name hidden so that you're respecting their wishes and not keeping the, the, player's, um, the player's information publicly available on the internet forever. Tornello can also collect registrations online. As I said before, Tornello manages the three um, main phases of a tournament life cycle, the registration process, the management of the event and online games during the event, and then uh, the ratings and results and rankings after the event is finished. So all three of those things are managed in one system, in one platform, and we manage those same, this exactly the same way, whether it's an over-the-board tournament, an online tournament, or as we're seeing more and more hybrid style events where you've got some people playing over the board and some people playing online. And so you've got one system that can manage the whole thing. Uh, you don't need to have you know, a registration system, a pairings program, a broadcast system for live games, an online platform for online games, you know, a results, uh, a results and, and pairings publishing site so that you can tell people what the pairings are for the next round. Everything is always just on the one side. So the online entry section here, Tornello will accept registrations. You've got some customizable uh, settings again in terms of uh, you know, some questions that you can ask or limits for players. Uh, and you can also collect registrations uh, and payments through the, the, the platform into your bank account. Uh, in order to do that, you need to have a Stripe account. We are at the moment connected only uh, for collecting credit cards through Stripe. Um, we're aware that some countries are not uh, compatible with Stripe as a, uh, as a payment uh, collection, uh, a merchant payment collection uh, facility. And so if you don't have Stripe in your account uh, in your country, uh, you may just need to wait uh, a couple of months uh, until we've got a PayPal um, payment gateway involved as well. And then you'll be able to collect payments either through Stripe or through, through PayPal um, directly into your account. So Tornello is, uh, is a free system uh, for almost every single, every single feature is free. You can run all the tournaments you like uh, with no cost. The only time that Tornello charges a fee uh, is when you are charging an entry fee to your players. Um, when you're processing that payment, Tornello will charge a transaction fee uh, on, 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 uh, on, that, uh, on that payment. So we see ourselves as in partnership with you as the tournament organizer and arbiter. We want you to have as many players as possible playing in the tournament with, uh, you know, with an experience that is good enough to charge a, a reasonable uh, you know, entry fee because the more entry fees that you collect, the more players you have in your tournament, uh, the more opportunity we have to charge a, a transaction fee and support our business and, and help us to continue uh, you know, hosting these events and, and uh, you know, developing new features. So, um, yeah, this is, you know, Tornello is, is you know, obviously very happy for people to use the system for free. Um, but if you do find that you need to collect registration fees, uh, hopefully you'll find that it is much easier and more efficient to collect them through Tornello uh, and, and you'll be happy to work in partnership with us. Uh, Tornello also integrates directly with a number of um, uh, international federations and rating systems uh, for the national federations, as well as with the FIDE ratings list. So you can create a uh, tournament and use the FIDE uh, ratings list or any of these other federations that we have, Netherlands, Belgium, Philippines, South Africa, Czech Republic, and Uruguay. Um, if your federation isn't listed there and you would like your um, you know, player player names, uh, you know, IDs, National Federation IDs, names and ratings to be available in the pairings program automatically. Uh, just let us know. Um, we, can, um, we can publish your national rating system through Tornello as well. What I'm gonna do now is show you um, an already created event. This is the event that we call our Skywalker Challenge. And the Skywalker Challenge uh, is our kind of, uh, practice event. So let's just move that one out of the way um, that we can show to people uh, and see how it's going. 
Now, um, at the moment, we still have some legacy. Uh, legacy is some of our, uh, you know, 2008 through 2012 uh, ancient history code and, and, uh, and buttons. So this page that you see here is what we call the pairings program. And the pairings program is uh, legacy code. So this pairings program is on the way out. We've been slowly replacing button by button, feature by feature, all of the functionality of this uh, pairings program and retiring this. We're about uh, two weeks away, maybe, maybe a little bit more, uh, but only about two weeks away from retiring this pairings program. So any functionality that you see in the pairings program today, uh, in two weeks time, if you don't see a pairings program at all, you will only see what we call the tournament lobby. And all of that same functionality will be in the tournament lobby. So nothing will, uh, nothing will change. Uh, it's just that uh, we won't have this uh, pairings program and all that same functionality will be inside the tournament lobby. So uh, the, the, the reason we're doing that is the pairings program, when it was written, uh, you know, obviously you know, more than a decade ago, the idea of live online tournaments uh, wasn't really a thing. And so uh, this only has information from uh, the, the user who's inputting it. If information comes from outside, like a game, online game finishes, we've got a second arbiter or a third arbiter who's running the tournament and they make changes, you won't see those changes reflected in the pairings program until you reload the page. Okay, so when you reload the page, it fetches all of the information from anyone else who's interacting with that. The tournament lobby is built in a more modern uh, you know, framework. And what that does is it updates automatically. So as soon as something changes, as soon as there's a new, uh, a new um, you know, piece of information, whether that's from a different arbiter or from a player who's finished a, a game, all that information is automatically updated into the pairings program. Right, so the pairings program, we have here our left-hand side navigation menu. So we've got our two different divisions, the Jedi and the Sith. Uh, we'll talk about the fair play uh, later on. There's a fair play report for all arbiters. So we've got our two different divisions. Within a division, we've got uh, standings, in this case, both for individuals or teams. Uh, and we've also then got pairings. So round one, round two, round three. And you can click through and navigate to anything that's going on here. So you've got your pairings. Within the pairings, you've got your board numbers down the left-hand side. And if they are online games, you can click on any game and actually see the game live in progress. And so that game would be um, would be would be live and being played. Uh, uh, you know, if it was being played live, you would see the moves happening. Uh, you know, as the game was in progress. Uh, our event summary page here at the top is the first page that everybody sees, and that event summary page is kind of like your own uh, miniature web web page for your, for your or home page for your tournament. And so all of this is, is customizable by the user. Okay, so you've got here some titles and some images and some links and regulations and information and contact details. So all of that is customizable by you in the tournament settings. You just click edit and you can update the tournament settings and you can put all of this event summary, this tournament homepage, uh, whatever information you want on that page for your players to see. And it will be the first place that everybody goes to when they, when they come to your tournament. Uh, especially if it's an online tournament, you need to communicate with players and typically people are using some sort of video conference, maybe a Zoom meeting uh, as a way of communicating with players. And so you've got a couple of buttons here that sit in that, uh, in that event homepage that you can customize the, the links. So we can send people to a particular Zoom meeting uh, you can send them to uh, you know, sponsors, you can send them to your next tournament, your business homepage, whatever you like. So you've got a couple of, a couple of customizable buttons. Um, mainly this one is used for sending people to their Zoom meeting um, uh, so, that, uh, so that they can join that Zoom meeting and communicate with player, your, your arbiters and other players during the tournament. The, the main idea for Tornello is that it's a single page application. So for every single part of the tournament, players, the arbiters, everybody just comes to the one URL. So you take that website there, that one page, and everything that you need to do is on that page. 
If you want to register for the tournament, you come to this page. If you want to uh, check your pairings for the next game, you come to that page. If you want to find your game and actually play a game, it's on this page. If you want to join the Zoom meeting, it's from this page. Uh, if you want to download a PGN file of the tournament, it's here. If you want to see the results in five years' time, it's here. So this is a single link for all of this, all of the things that happens uh, in, in the tournament. Uh, and shortly, it'll be the same for the arbiters as well. Instead of having a pairings program link as well, so you've got, at the moment, two different views over the same tournament, the arbiters will be able to do pairings, uh, you know, edit pairings, delete players, add players, all of the other stuff, all from this one link. And you're just navigating around the tournament within, uh, within, within this one page. Okay, so you know, we've got some capability to, to you know, withdraw people or block players and things at the moment, um, but you, you can, you, to do the pairings, you're still um, heading to the pairings program uh, to, to do pairings. All right, so uh, how do we actually run a tournament on Tornello? We've seen the setup, we've seen uh, the, the navigation, so we've got our tournaments here. So let's now go to the, um, to the player's perspective and see what a player is going to be seeing when, when they're joining a tournament. Um, and then uh, when you see what the player sees, you'll also be able to, uh, to start, I'll show you what the, what the arbiters are going to be doing as well. The player, when I first come to the tournament page, uh, it will look something like this. It will tell me that I'm a player. There's this message bar at the top of the page. So again, you just give the players the same link that the arbiter is on. Uh, it's the same page for everybody. Um, they will have used this page to register for the tournament. Um, and instead of saying check in, it will show them a registration link. Um, and then when they come to this page here and they've already registered, it tells them you're a player for this tournament. So this, this message bar at the top here, um, this keeps people, uh, keeps people updated with the information that they need to know uh, as the tournament's in progress. So in general, they just need to read the message and then click the blue button. And the blue button will always be kind of the next step for them. So the first thing that uh, everybody needs to do when you come to a tournament, of course, is to let the arbiter know that you're here. So we've got a process we call check-in process, a little bit like getting on an aeroplane. You've got to tell the airline that you're going to be there. Um, you obviously, you've got to buy your ticket to start off with. That's the registration process. But then you've got to tell them that, yes, you're actually going to show up. And then, of course, when you get to the tournament, you know, you, 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 you check in again as you, uh, as you walk past and actually onto the plane. So um, you can use this check-in process on the day of the event. The players come here, uh, they tick the box to say that they're, uh, that they're here and ready to play. It tells them that they're ready. And what you'll see as the arbiter in, in our, either our player list or our standings on a particular division, in the player list, you'll see Master Yoda has now got that green check mark next to his name, which shows you the, that they've checked in and ready to play. Um, one of the, the main things that we're trying to do as Tornello is give you, the organizer and the arbiter, kind of an overview of everything that's happening in the tournament all the time. So here you've got an overview. You can see there's a green light next to Yoda, there's a green light next to Luke, and we can know that those two people are actually present and active in the tournament lobby. And you've even got a timestamp that says, oh yeah, they're, they're active you know, very recently. So all the information about the tournament is, is visible to you as the arbiter. As a player, you'll also get to see some of that information. You don't get to see the registration fees, but you'll get to see, okay, these people are active and they're, they're ready to go. As other players become uh, active, you'll see that their names are going green and they're checking their names off. And eventually, once everybody has their name ticked off in the tournament, then you'll feel like, okay, great. Everybody's here. We're ready to start playing our games. So that's the first stage. You've got your, uh, your, your, your check-in process. You've got your activity status so that you know what's going on and you can see everything that's happening in, uh, in, in your tournament, full overview. All right, to, to actually kick the tournament off, I'll just go back to our pairings program. So as a tournament arbiter, first thing you need to do is reload the page to get all the information off the tournament lobby where all the players have been ticking their boxes. So we need to come into the pairings program, uh, bring all the information in, 
and now we're going to kick this tournament off. So we're going to say start the tournament. We're going to just uh, allow a random top seed color. And here we have the pairings for round number one. So it's our player list, our pairings for round number one. And you can see here are all your pairings for the first round. If you need to change something, uh, you've got full control. So you can delete a pairing. So let's say board three, we don't want pardon me to play against Boba Fett. We can just delete that pairing here. So we've got a little trash can icon that deletes the pairing and leaves these two as unpaired. If we want to rearrange players as well, you can say, actually, I want Luke to be on board number one. I can just type Luke's name in here and that will rearrange the players there. So Obi-Wan doesn't have an opponent now, he's got a buy. Uh, Anakin's been dropped to the unpaired status, and now we've got these two players playing against each other. I can add people to the pairings if I want to, add Boba Fett here, add Anakin in here, and so I can update and modify the pairings in, in any way that I want. As I'm doing that, for the players, they will automatically see, Jedi Open, round one, all of these pairings are changing um, as you're changing them. Right? So everything that you do as, a, as an arbiter is automatically reflected live in the tournament. Of course, sometimes you don't want things to be live, um, but you want to just fiddle around with pairings uh, in a in kind of draft. So you've got the ability to set tournament pairings as draft. And then you'll see here, round one isn't paired up. It tells you that the next round's coming soon. But as a player, I can't actually see the pairings yet. Once you finish playing around with them, you can publish the pairings. Publishing the pairings allows the pairings to be seen. Oh, look, I can see them now, but I can't actually click on anything at the moment. So there's no live games. We're not actually able to play a live game. And only when you're ready, you'll make the round live. And by going to live, now all of the players, you can click on any of the games to watch them. And there's a message at the top for the player. Okay, you're... Um, playing in this, in this game, play now. And you can click the play now button to be joining your game. So for the players, once they join the game, uh, you'll see a green connection icon here next to the player's clock, right? And a red connection icon next to the opponent's name. The rules for playing uh, online games on Tornello say that you have to wait for your opponent to be there. Okay, it's a little bit like an over the board, well, it's a lot like an over the board tournament. Um, you wouldn't be starting the game when your opponent uh, hasn't actually got to the board yet. You'd want to make sure that you, um, that you uh, wait for your opponent to show up, right? So uh, when our opponent arrives at the board, okay, the light will go green. And when the opponent shows up at the board and their light goes green, the game will be able to start at that point, okay? But only, only at that time. Before then, you have to wait for the games to start. As an arbiter, you might want the games to start before everybody comes. So as an arbiter here on the round one pairings, you can see everything that's happening. Again, you've got an overview of what's happening in your entire tournament. So we've got all these connection icons, these red or green connection status icons next to every player's name. And you're able to see when those two players are both green. So you might see everybody's green except one, and you say, oh, well, I, I want to start that particular game. So we've got a start all clocks button, or as an RB, you can go in and actually start an individual game. So the players now both have arrived. We've got two green icons. And so now the game just begins. Now, of course, the, the um, game is the same as any other uh, online platform. You can play a game of chess, you know, click and drag uh, to move a piece or click and click on the destination square as, as, you, as you like. Um, you will also have the ability to, um, to pre-move. Um, we've got uh, some of our game preferences here. So you can see that we can change the color and the style of pieces, for example. We can... Um, create some of the, the settings that we need to, so that we're able to, um, you know, to, to pre-move. So if we do that, and that's our pre-move, we've got a pre-move set, okay? And that, all of this is, is created from these game settings, uh, game settings here. So I'm gonna go back to a different 
uh, different set. I'm going to go for a green one with these pieces here. So there's our pre-move listed there. I'll cancel the pre-move. Um, we've also got some streamer features. Uh, and so we've got these streamer features allowing annotations. So what that does is allows you to draw arrows on the board or highlight squares during the course of your, your, of your game. Um, now, some arbiters may not want players to be able to do that while the game's in progress, and, and they don't want them to be able to um, uh, stream at the same time as they're playing, and arbiters have control over these sorts of settings. So an arbiter can control whether players are allowed to pre-move. An arbiter can control whether players are allowed to request a take back. Okay, do I want to take back my move? Uh, an arbiter can control when can you offer a draw, how many moves do you have to make before you offer a draw. So the arbiter is in full control of all of the settings. Um, okay, there's a move, and before white makes the move here, um, perhaps white is aiming for queen f7, plays queen g6, a, a mouse slip. Now, um, if you, uh, as a player, have any problems or questions during a game, we've got this arbiter chat down the bottom. So by clicking the up arrow, it'll just open the chat. Or if I click the call arbiter button, pause the clock and calls the arbiter to our game. Right? The arbiter will see on their page, oh, I'm an arbiter, there's an arbiter call. Master Yoda has called me. I can go to the game and um, I can then chat to the player. I could say, help. Okay. Now the player will receive those messages. Oops, here's the player, and can say, uh, "I now slipped." Please take that. Right. And the arbiter can make a decision. The arbiter can say, "All right, let's have a look at that." I can see the move that they intended to make. Okay, I'm going to allow a take back, and so the arbiter's got some controls here, which allows them to, uh, to, to, you know. Um, take back moves, change the clocks, uh, do all sorts of all sorts of things that they that they need to do. Okay, when they've finished doing what the arbiter needs to do, uh, hit resume. The clocks start again, and uh, the players can now continue their continue their game. Okay, of course, uh, if a player then resigns the game, they oh, given up. Um, as an arbiter, you can even restart that game. So if you say, look, no, don't, don't throw it away. Like, let's, you know, let's discuss this. Uh, let's, let's, uh, you know, get, get this game started again. I'll just come back as an arbiter and uh, we'll, we'll get you to, to resume that game. So I'm just going to switch back to Arbiter profile, and in that game, as an arbiter, I'll be able to uh, restart the game. So even though this game is finished, I can now restart the game, continue from the current position. There we go. I'll adjust the clocks to give players uh, you know, some extra time or some time penalties, whatever I need to do. Uh, and then I can resume this game. Go resume the game, and ready to go for uh, for the players to continue their game. Okay, actually, I even wanted to take back that move, so I'll just undo that last move as well, so that uh, White can now finish the game off. So come back as White and play that final. And it's over. So that's yeah, a bit of detail. Um, Arbiters basically have full control over everything that happens in all of their tournament. Okay, the player is now being told what's happening next. The arbiter would go to their pairings program, reload the page to have all the information dragged into the results. So here's the results. Of course, in the tournament lobby, all of the results come in automatically. And in the pairings program, we reload the page to get that information in. So the pairings are now in. If you wanted to change it, we can change, uh, we can make you know, any, any result, we can overwrite a result. So now I'm going to change that to a draw. Um, so you can overwrite any result you like. Um, put in some results for the games and then uh, pair the next round. Okay. 
you go for round two, three, four, five, seven, uh, as many rounds as you need. At the end of the tournament, you can process the system, you can process for ratings and all sorts of things as well. So you can eventually, uh, you'll have player, player profiles uh, for your players when they've played in multiple tournaments. So you can, you can see, for example, this player here, who's had lots of tournaments across the last uh, you know, 10 years and all of the tournaments are uh, on their player profile still. And you can click through to any of those events uh, and see all the results, all the round by round pairings, the individual games, uh, and you can even download any of the information you want. Uh, Tornello is also fully compatible with uh, other pairings programs. You need to upload or, or, or download information. You've got the ability to uh, upload uh, tournaments. You can upload games. You can upload entries. You can upload pairings. Um, and you can download all of these information as well. So you can download games. You can download your entries and get the email addresses and phone numbers of all the players who are in your tournament. You can download TRF files so that you can share them with VDA for ratings and, of course, uh, you know, all your PGN files as well. So that gives you, um, I guess, a basic overview of the features for, um, for, for creating and running a tournament, whether that's an online tournament, a face-to-face -face over the board tournament, or, uh, or a hybrid style tournament. Um, I want to thank you for joining in uh, today and participating, and we look forward to seeing you in some of the future webinars uh, that we'll be running uh, on various different topics.